Hi everyone, it's me Lauren Chapin and you are enjoying Conversations with Lauren Chapin. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. Listen, it is January the 10th. It is a new year which means new beginnings. And I am thrilled to be here, whoo, to be alive, to say, God, this is your day. You made it, and I rejoice in it. I hope you can do the same thing. I want to thank you very, very much for your letters, for your emails, for getting in contact with me, either in person or through mail or through telephone calls, um, sharing your life with me and asking me to come back and share my life with you. Not that my life is real exciting, it's not, but I'm alive and I'm happy and I'm feeling good. I've gone through a lot of physical challenges and I've gone through losing people that I love and I've gone through just some traumas but you know, God has been there with me all the way, and I've had not to go through it alone. So um, I want to thank you for your prayers. I want to thank you for standing in the gap for me because I have a lot of friends that uh, know me and know when I become silent, that's when I need help. And that's when I take time to hear from the Father. And I, I hope you're doing the same thing. Um, 2022 is a year of new beginnings. And I'm excited to go through the new beginnings with you, my fans, my friends, my family. Life is good. Even when it's not, life is good. I have a savior who loves me, and he loves you too, so I, I want you to know that, okay? I'm going to, this year, I kind of have purposed in my heart that um, I want to start a new beginning with you guys. I want to share the Word of God in a new way with you. And I've been reading a wonderful book on Psalms, and I think maybe you'll enjoy that too. So um, I'm going to purpose every day to read uh, a psalm to you and give you an explanation and just let you meditate upon it. Get it deep in your heart. I got the hiccups. I'm sorry. Get it deep in your heart and um, be able to find strength, encouragement, thought-provoking um Speech, communication, we're going to change some things. We're going to make our world a better world by our love. You know, love covers a multitude of sins. And love is so important, especially when you're feeling alone especially when you don't have anybody to talk to, except crazy me. And you can do that, because I love hearing from you. But you know, there are people that live by themselves, and, and, and they're alone. And I understand it, and so does the Father. The Father in heaven, who sent you his son, Jesus, he knows when you're alone. He knows when you have company. He knows when you're crying. He knows when you're laughing. He knows when you're sleeping. He knows everything about you and everything about me, good, bad, or indifferent. Yet he loves me and he loves you. Okay? So this year, we're going to go through uh, some books. We're going to go through some um, being in touch with the Lord. Okay, is that okay? Ah, yeah, there we go. I feel better. <laughs> All right, so 
let me just share this with you. Uh, 2022, a wonderful year. 10 days of a wonderful year. Uh, I know that your calendar may be full. It might be full of work assignments, or it might be full of doctor assignments, or it may be empty. Who knows? But we're going to go through it together. We're going to have a great time, and I'm so happy to be here with you. I'm crazy. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. Enjoy. Have the joy of the Lord. He's your strength. He's my strength, too. I want to tell you about something that brought tears to my eyes last night. I was going through my Facebook, and I read the story uh, that I, I, I don't know the lady's name. I didn't catch it, but I did read her story, and she posted a picture of a, a red cardinal in her hand. Matter of fact, two pictures of the red cardinal in her hand. And um, I happen to like birds. Uh, I like all animals. I love all animals. But this particular story caught my eye. She must have been a, a working lady. Um, maybe she had her own business. I'm, I'm kind of surmising that she did have her own business and that she was on her way into work. And as she was driving down the road, she saw something in the road and she stopped to see what it was. Well, when she stopped, she thought perhaps the image in the road would move and it didn't. So she got out of her car and she walked a little closer to the, where this little animal was. And as she approached it, she thought, surely it'll fly away. And it was a red cardinal. So she walked up to it and she realized that this cardinal wasn't moving. And so she scooped it up, got it in her hand, and he didn't flop over. He stood erect right in the palm of her hand. And she looked at it, and she thought, this is so peculiar. I, I don't know, and you know, is he hurt? But why would a cardinal just be sitting in the palm of my hand and not moving? So she very carefully and gently touched the top of his head and still it didn't move. So then she took a wing and kind of moved the wing to see if it was broken. It wasn't. So she went around, took the other wing. It wasn't broken. And she just really studied this cardinal and realized that she didn't see any wounds on it. But how strange for that bird to be sitting in the palm of her hand without moving. So she went to the car and got on her phone, and um, she called a bird sanctuary and asked the bird sanctuary if they took cardinals. And they said, no, we don't. So when she hung up the phone, she thought, okay, uh, it's Monday. I have to go to work. <laughs> I have so much on my agenda. What am I going to do with this cardinal? And she said, okay, let me try calling another sanctuary. So she called another sanctuary, and that sanctuary said, yes, bring the cardinal in. Now, that sanctuary was an hour away from where she was. And she had a choice to either take the cardinal and put him by the side of the road or take the cardinal and drive an hour to that sanctuary and forgo her work. I don't know. I don't know how people can afford to do that, but that's what this lady did. She called her work, 
told him to cancel all of her meetings and she drove that cardinal to the sanctuary. And when she got to the sanctuary, that baby bird was still right there in her hand. Now, I don't know if it was a baby bird or not, but I, I know it was a red cardinal sitting in her hand. And she took it into the office and she had the, the vet look at it and the vet said um, its clavicle was broken and that's why it wasn't moving. Something wonderful happened in the car while she was driving that baby bird. I say baby bird because it's a poor baby. That bird to the sanctuary. As she was driving, and as she looked at that cardinal, that cardinal looked up at her and chirped a beautiful tune. She drove a little further and again, that cardinal chirped a beautiful tune. And then another beautiful tune. And that impressed her. She thought, how can a bird that is hurting so bad and is so still and so trusting sing a beautiful song. And she thought, this is a lesson from God. This little cardinal that can't fly its clavicle is broken, and yet this cardinal is singing a song. Think about that for a second. I thought about it for a long time, and I started to cry because it was a message of hope, a message from God for us that no matter what it is we're going through, we can sing a song of praise, of joy, of hope. I lost my mom in October. She's not my real mother, but she was the mother that God replaced for me. I had her 40, 40 years. She was my mother, my sister, my best friend. We were called the Go-Go Girls because we went everywhere. We traveled everywhere together. She incorporated me and my children into her family. She grafted us in to her family. She was an unbelievable mother. She was what I needed. I lost her in October at the ripe age of 95. I would talk to her every day. I know a lot of you have lost loved ones and my heart is, is heavy yet joyful. I've prayed for you and I've felt your pain as I've gone through my own pain. But through it all, as I look at her picture, as I see my precious Gina, and I know where she's at. I know she's in heaven with Jesus. That she has a new body. That she's with her own blood that has gone before her. And she's rejoicing in the Lord. And she's watching over me. 
just like your husband, your mother, your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, whomever it is that you have lost, if they knew the Father the way Jesus knew the Father, if their names were written in the Lamb's Book of Life, like my name is, like her name was, you see, we're children of God. Our, our, our world is not here. It's not on this earth. We live here, but we're going to go to heaven one of these days. She's in heaven watching me, rejoicing over me, just like your family, if they know the Father. That little bird was a message from God for that lady to give her encouragement, to give her hope, to let her know that even in the physical pain that that bird was in because his clavicle was broken, he could still sing. And we can still sing too. God has given us every morning that we wake up a new day, a new beginning. And even though we lose people, he's right beside us. He's all around us. And so is that person that we've lost from this earth into their heavenly home. We're not alone. We have the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in us. And we have our angels and we have our loved ones. And they're with us. They're watching over us. They're guiding us. They're speaking to us through the Word of God. What a blessing. So, the moral of this story of this beautiful cardinal bird is that God is speaking to you. That He loves you. That He's sharing His song with you his song of deliverance, his song of hope, his song of love. And I'm speaking to you too, and I'm sharing with you that I love you also. But God's love is greater. And Jesus, who died for you, when you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll be with you always. I'm not a spring chicken. I don't know how long I have on this earth. I know that as long as I'm alive, I'm going to tell people about the love of God, the love of his son, and the love of his Holy Spirit. I want you to have the same joy that I have. There's a song that says, I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart today. And I'd like you to be able to have that same joy. So, I will see you tomorrow, God willing. God bless you. Keep those emails coming. Let me know what you need, what you want to hear. Share with me what's going on in your life. Because I'm going to share with you what's going on with mine. I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, God, spirit-filled, Jesus-loving 
day. Bye-bye.